I title this the progressive era title this the progressive era we just got done talking about TR and Taft and some of their changes so we're gonna kinda go through this um, take a different angle at this and look at you know where this came from okay the uh, origin of the progressive era really starts back with the populist party okay and that was in the 1890s um, out of Cincinnati Ohio the populist party was born and made it made up of main, mainly farmers small business owners um, they actually will nominate a man to run for president two guys um, in 1892 and 1896 but uh, it won't work out so that's why you haven't heard of them the populist party itself will kind of die out in the 1890s uh, due to some of the prosperity that happened in the 1890s so it really kind of felt like maybe there wasn't necessarily a need for that um, but as we'll see it'll jump back what the populist party wanted was number one an income tax a graduated income tax which means that there are different levels of what you would actually pay so the more you earn the more that that uh, you would pay that's how we have it today there's different tax brackets so um, just determine on what you would make number two and here is the most controversial one and another reason why the populist party kind of died government ownership of production well guess what folks that is called socialism socialism is kind of a dirty word in our country um, not popular at all okay the fact that the government has ownership of railroads telegraphs and phones did not make a lot of people happy kind of goes against our a lot of our beliefs so that's one thing that uh, helped the the uh, populist party kind of die out um, they wanted a shorter work day number three and then four they want a direct election of senators so just by following the, our last couple lectures you know that they will get some of these things um, the populist party will be replaced by the progressive movement um, because of some of the things that all happened during this time. Oop, I'm going backwards. So here is the progressive movement. And here are, oops, there are your essential questions. There were your essential questions. What were the key goals of the progressives? Okay, that is going to be the question that you're going to answer tonight. What were the key goals of the progressives? Okay, that's the one that we'll answer tonight. So make sure you answer that essential question. Now, the Populist Party. Once again, kind of went over this already. Uh, goals, direct election of senators, shorter workday, government ownership, income tax. So we went over that stuff. The progressive movement. Why? Okay. Why did this come about? Number one, corruption, guys. Corruption was crazy. Okay, here is we've talked about Boss Tweed. Here's a picture of Boss Tweed with with his thumb on New York, uh, basically saying he controlled that the uh, city bosses, the voting scandals, the spoil system, um, and the corruption really took take takes place on every level. Okay, so we need to try to clean this up. Another reason, inequality in income and business corruption. So the inequality of the economy really took place between the super rich and the super wars, super poor. So we see that gap grow even bigger. <clears throat> Number three, restore popular control of the government. Okay, this is not the first time that we want to try to take back the control of the government, okay? But it's because we, we feel that the government has too much power. So we want to see some of these things happen. And then four, various ills of society. The slums, child labor, worker safety, quality control, um, women's rights. Okay, we had a lot of problems that uh, came about because of our growth and urbanization and things like that. But now we got to try to fix them. Politicians would now begin to speak about reform, and we'll see our progressive presidents will be the next three guys, T.R., William Howard Taft, and then Woodrow Wilson. So
So here are progressive presidents. A lot of this is going to be review. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was a trust buster. As we know, he uh, negotiated that coal strike first time where both sides were represented and both sides felt that they had a square deal, which goes back to Teddy Roosevelt's name of his presidency. Railroad legislation, conservation, he was considered a progressive. He enforced the Sherman Antitrust Act, attacked the bad monopolies. Okay, He threatened to use the military to break the coal strike. Um, supported legislation to stop rebates such as the uh, Mann's Elkins Act, um, regulated the railroads, telegraphs, and telephones, uh, created the Pure Food and Drug Administration, and we'll see why when we talk about muckraking later. With uh, There was basically no regulation as far as food production goes, which can be quite deadly. Also, very concerned for the environment and conservation. Okay, so the things that we've already talked about. Another progressive president, William Howard Taft. Beefy. He also was anti-monopoly, uh, antitrust. We talked about the 90 lawsuits that he filed compared to the 42 that TR filed. Um, and made a lot of things that TR did legal, especially in conservation. And then our third president who we'll talk more about Woodrow Wilson Woody Wilson okay he believed in the lowering the tariff Federal Reserve which we'll talk more about the Federal Reserve is basically what makes our money controls our money um, it's a national bank basically um, believed in fair trade laws once again antitrust laws against monopolies so he's going to follow the pack there. Now, reformed in our state governments. Okay? A man named Robert La Follette. Battling Bob. Okay? He was a Wisconsin governor, and he believed in what is called the Wisconsin Idea. The Wisconsin Idea was basically pushing for regulatory laws dealing with reforming railroads at the time. Okay? And ba this sounds stupid, but this is what it was. Instead of just having lawmakers come up with these ideas, let's have experts come in from the various fields and write up the reforms that they believe are the major problems in the area and let the experts figure it out. What an amazing idea. Okay, but he gets credit for that. Okay, and he was obviously attacked by the Republican machine, the political bosses, because it's taking away from their power. That's battling Bob. We see this guy's hair. I thought I had a picture. Maybe I do. There he is. Hello. The muckrakers. These are journalists, investigative reporters, and we're going to do an activity with this. They were journalists who would dig dirt up on various industries and the people who ran them. They would often go undercover and write about the ills of society, things that you don't want to know about, but they're going to write about them. And a lot of times it's shocking, okay? And we're going to hear the most famous guy is this one. His name is Upton Sinclair. Upton Sinclair wrote a book called The Jungle, and The Jungle attacks the meat industry, the meat packing industry. And as a result of his findings and his writing, the FDA, the Food and Drug Act Administration, will be created because of his book. His book was actually set out to be a story of an immigrant and how hard immigrant life was. But through his investigative reporting, he actually worked in a meatpacking industry. He's going to find out just how nasty it is of uh, to work in those factories let alone and also to eat the food that's coming out of those factories that is going to revolutionize how things are done in our meat packing industry so very important man there next time you eat a hot dog think about Upton Sinclair the octopus Frank Norris wrote the octopus and once again the octopus was about the railroad industry. Okay, think about a train station, how all the train tracks 
leave the central part. That's where the arms of the octopus come into play. And his book will lead to reforms in the railroad industry, especially with the workers and their long hours and dangerous jobs and things like that. Ida Tarbell. She will write, it's called The History of Standard Oil, and will actually go into the life of the Rockefellers, just tell you basically how crazy rich they really are, and uh, kind of exposes the family of some of their interesting traditions and things that they follow, and uh, really sheds some light on the differences between the regular Americans and the super crazy rich Americans. Lincoln Steffens will write a book called The Shame of the Cities and we'll talk about what is going on in the slums and here's a picture of the trash in the slums and things like that. What is going on in the cities because we don't have the sanitation and sewers and things like that at this point. We're getting there but we don't. And then probably the most famous or one of the most famous muckrakers is Jacob Rees. And basically because with the new technology of photography um, and our cameras are getting better, he is going to go in and take pictures of the slums. Okay, He took many photos of what life is really like in the cities because, frankly, the rich people never went there, so they're not going to see it. He's going to publish this book, and, he, and we'll even go directly to President Teddy Roosevelt to show him what's going on. So some of the famous pictures that we'll see, and we'll talk a little bit about him later. The last one is the Ashcan School Painters. Basically, these are a school of painters that showed life in the cities, what it was like. Um, the paintings would be on display of other ones. Here's one of the railroads, basically showing the ills of society through painting. Because you got to remember, we don't have the Internet. We don't have iPods and no TVs. You're getting your news from the newspapers, books, paintings and photographs okay that's how you get your news back in the day so a lot of these things come from that now the democratic reforms let's stop there and we will continue that at a in the next lecture stay classy vandalia